Inspire airbrush paints have been one of Europe's best-selling solvent airbrush paints for years. They're described as a highly pigmented solvent airbrush paint and have been specifically designed for airbrush use and ready to spray straight out of the bottle. They come in a massive range of base colors, candies, metallics, pearls, chromes, and color changing effect paints also. Today I'm going to try out their white, black, a metallic, and also a red candy. And I'm going to put them through a series of rigorous test, test, tests to see how they perform. And straight out of the bottle, I mean, it's not the strongest covering color, and that's probably what you want so that you can get a little bit of control out of this, especially for airbrush work. You don't want it to be too intense, too fast. And this certainly meets that criteria. And in terms of coverage, it's actually perfect for airbrush work. Just a little dry spray test. I'll see if I can get any dry spray. Generally with a solvent based paint, where it's a fast drying solvent, if you're too far from the surface and you spray dusting coats, you'll typically get a dry spray which can be very difficult to cover in the clearing stages. You sort of have to soak a clear coat onto it and really hope that it melts into the, <laughs> into the artwork. So, as with any solvent-based airbrush paint, it's always best to tack rag between coats, so I definitely recommend you do that. What I like about this is that there's no roughness to the paint. I can't feel any dry spray. It's just overspray sitting on top. Now, while I've still got a bit of that black in the color cup, I'm gonna go ahead and add some reducer. I just wanna see how it atomizes when it's reduced compared to how it is straight out of the bottle. Straight out of the bottle, it's actually pretty good. And I've got about 50% reducer in there. And I just wanna see what sort of detail I can actually get out of that. It just sprays nicely, like the atomization is really nice, especially if you reduce it a bit. If you reduce it a hell of a lot, I think you could really get some super light tones, very fine lines. Pretty good detail we're getting out of that. I'll just put my finger there for you. So I'm really impressed with the coverage, atomization and flow of the black base coat and can get some really fine lines. However, why don't we go ahead and put a little bit of silver metallic into the airbrush and see how that performs. Now this is just straight out of the bottle. I just wanted to see how the metallic performs just using in a bit of a freehand action. Because I remember back in the day when I used to use solvent based paints, this is where metallics would really struggle. You certainly couldn't use them in a freehand capacity or you were definitely limited to the amount of detail you could get out of them. And it seems that the metallic actually performs pretty well straight out of the airbrush. However, I would like to give the red candy a go and see how that performs. Now the one thing that I'd like to pick that I did notice with the red candy is that I needed a lot of layers on top in order to build up the right amount of saturation of color. So it's certainly not an easy covering dye. You're going to have to watch out for dry spray, but at the same time, you could say that's designed for airbrush use because it's going to avoid you getting streaks in the candy. Now this is straight out of the bottle, this white. So I just wanted to see if it behaves like all other solvent based base coat whites. And it pretty much does. The atomization isn't that fine. And obviously because it's a white, you can't really have that with pigments that you want to cover. And I'm certainly getting a lot more tip dry with this paint too. So I'm going to add about 50% reducer and see how it works. 
Yeah, that's heaps better. Now, just by adding about 25% of the Inspire Reducer to the white base coat, I'm finding you can get a great increase in flow and you can definitely use this white for high detailed work, like little highlights, little lines, things like that. Freehand work. And I can certainly get a lot more detail out of that now. Just a little comparison with my finger there. Now after these rigorous tests, I just want to go around and have a little play, have a bit of fun, knock myself out with these paints and just see how they go on something like clayboard for the hobby artist and just want to see how they perform with scratching and erasing techniques. So I just wanted to get in there and do a little bit of freehand work little bit of scratching and erasing just see how it goes for the hobby artist um, just how it performs and I was actually pretty damn impressed with the way that it works it's it sprays super fine you can get some super fine detail straight out of the gun but it also takes kindly to erasers to create some incredible textures after spending about an hour on this eye I definitely feel that these paints are great with erasing and scratching techniques allowing you to add just small amounts of pressure and take off less paint. It's going to be, allow you to create some incredible effects. It's exactly the type of paint I look for actually. The only thing that I think that Inspire could improve on here is the bottle. Just if it had a head where we could just simply pour a lot easier, more easily into the airbrush. So just a, a drip ahead or something like that. Cause at the moment I have to unscrew the whole lid and pour it in. But I'm picking straws here. You could put it into another bottle. If you're going to put it into a jar, you're going to want to pour it anyway. So have to come up with something, don't I? Anyway, thank you very much for checking out the Inspire review. They're now available at Chicago Airbrush Supply. And uh, knock yourselves out. Just spread the love all over the room.